Good morning, everybody. It's Mr. Newman here with another math lesson. Uh, today is actually um, kind of a bit of a tough lesson for today. What I want for you to do today is to just take notes and take your notes just as if you were in class. You're probably going to have to watch this video uh, two, maybe even three times to get the idea of what we're doing when we model integer multiplication. Uh, modeling is a picture of a situation that involves numbers. So I've got my teacher of all things mug here today. Uh, the only question you might have to answer for today is uh, just proof that you watched the video. Like I said, take some notes, go slowly, and we will um, probably tackle this thing uh, in no time. All right, so we're looking at models for integer multiplication. And uh, there are a couple things that we need to review first. Um, today I'm going to be using circles with positive and circles with negative signs in them to stand for uh, positive one and negative one. So a circle with a plus sign in it is standing for positive one, and a circle with a negative sign in it is standing for negative one. And if you are a little bit uh, unclear of that, uh, go back, watch some of the other videos. Another thing that we will end up using today is something called zero pairs. And I just want you to remind yourself that a zero pair is the value you get whenever you have the same number of positives with the same number of negatives. So if you have three positives and three negatives, that number is actually zero. Okay, it's a big fat netting because the number of positives cancel out the number of negatives. And we're going to be using that for some of the models. So a lot of times I, I say it this way, uh, they cancel each other out and create zero. So zero is a number. It is in the set of integers just like any other number. So uh, sometimes we're going to need it when we model integers. So we're going to start with um, the first case. So the first case is actually the easiest. And there's a few things that we're going to do today that are kind of a review of multiplication. And when we go through and we do this, we're going to review ways that we can represent multiplication. And also, we're going to represent the idea of grouping or groups, because that's what multiplying is. Multiplying is taking a certain number of groups of something. Okay, so let's say that we started off with positive 4 multiplied by positive 5. Uh, this is just like a regular multiplication question, but if we were you were asked to draw a model of this, the way it would work is I want you to think of these as being um, a little bit different. Add 4, multiplying, I want you to think of it as groups of, groups of. So add 4, groups of positive five. And in order for our model to be correct, all of these elements need to be visible in our model somewhere. So uh, with this one, we're gonna start off with adding four groups of positive five to see what it equals. So we're gonna start with one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna make those all positive. Take your time when you're doing your models, do them nice and neat. I like to do my groups uh, this way, vertically, and the number in each group horizontally. Keep that consistent. There's a reason for that. Right now we have two groups, two groups of positive five. I wanna stop you for a second. I want you to stop and just think, what multiplication sentence do you think this shows right now? What multiplication sentence do you think this shows right now? Well, if you said, two groups of positive five or positive two times positive five, you're, you're absolutely right. So here's one group, two groups. We need to keep on going because we need to show four groups. The other thing that I'd like you to get into the habit of doing is lining up your, um, your integer disks nice and nice and evenly. We'll need that later on, and we'll certainly need it if we ever decide to talk about models for division, which are kind of crazy, kind of crazy. So right now, that's our answer. So all together, uh, going this way, we have our positive four. Going across this way, 
we've created kind of an array. And if we were to count all these up or to skip count 5, 10, 15, 20, uh, you'll see that our answer is the total number. And what's left are all positive integers. And that kind of falls into line with the rules for integers that we studied um, a couple of classes ago when we looked at the rules for integers. So this is something that you probably see on uh, IXL.com. And uh, when you look at that, now you might understand it a little bit better. So case one, positive multiplied by positive. And the symbol we used for multiplying on this one was just the traditional kind of X symbol, okay? Case two, flip the page, align the page, refill coffee into system. Delicious. Ah, oh, all right. Ah, teacher of all things mug. Okay, the second case. We're going to change the integers up a little bit. Uh, our second case is a positive multiplied by a negative. So we're going to use, uh, let's say, positive 4. And we're going to use a different notation for multiplying because you may see these in your future. So this little dot here is another symbol for multiplication. And again, we're going to interpret this in words. We're going to think of it as add for multiplying involves groups of and negative three needs to be visible in our diagram. So those three ideas, adding four groups of negative three need to be in our, um, our model. Okay, so we're going to try that right here. Start with one, two, three, and we have to put negative signs in those integer disks. Okay, zoom in on that just a bit. Try to focus. And one, two, three. Right now, we're up to three groups of negative three. So, again, if we're showing our groups, this way, sometimes we want to make that clear. We need one more group of negative three. So clearly in this one here, going vertically, we've got four groups added and across there's negative three and all together we've created a four by three array. So our answer is negative 12. And that falls in line with our rules for multiplying integers. When the signs are different, you end up with a negative value. And this is a picture of how we can show that, okay? A picture of how we can show that. Um, so that's uh, the, the second case. It's, um, again, a little bit easier, I find that when we start off with a multiplication sentence that involves a positive integer, it's a little bit easier because we just create a nice crisp looking array with vertical and horizontal lines. And then uh, basically all you have to do is count or multiply them together. And the picture should be the sign of the integer disks that you started with. No fuss, no mas. Easy breezy, lemon squeezy. Time to turn the page means time to take some coffee. Oh, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Okay. Um, so, uh, some key ideas so far. Remember zero pairs. We reviewed that. Um, so, if we had this number and these shaded ones were uh, positive, this is a number way, another way. To represent the number zero. Okay, so zero can look like this, and uh, because each one of these cancel out, uh, multiplication can look different. So 
So multiplication can use this symbol. It can use the dot notation on your calculators or your apps. The multiplication symbol that's used often uh, or on a computer keyboard for some computer programs is the asterisk. So if you're using technology, this is a very common one, um, asterisk. And now um, there's a, another way. And I call this the mushed means multiply method. The mushed means multiply. So mushed means multiply. Uh, we're going to use that for our next question. So I don't want that to throw you off. I call that the triple M or the mm, mushed means multiply. And whenever you see two values, uh, usually a bracket is involved or a, a variable. If uh, you see two values mushed together, it means we're going to multiply those two values together. So case number three. I'll be back. <laughs> 